Spy Game. If Robert Redford states that Spy Game is a thinking man's action film, then who am I to argue? I'm sitting here talking to you. I'm also checking the room, memorizing the people, what they're wearing. Then I ask the question, what's wrong with this picture? Anything suspect? You gotta see it, assess it, and dismiss most of it without looking, without thinking. Without thinking. It's just like breathing. You breathe, don't you? A neatly plotted espionage thriller that sadly was a little too well, undercover for its own good. Okay, I want you to listen, but I want your concentration to be on something different. Anything else so you don't react. Understand? Yes. So when do I get my first assignment? When I decide you're ready. What is your name? As with most Tony Scott movies, there's very little in the way of a deep-seated message. There are no dead drops required to understand Spy Game's intimation. The film is ultimately about sacrificing for friendship, or as one critic put it, a father risking everything to save his son from certain death. Which is the depth to which I want my action thrillers to go? This isn't Shakespeare. Scott does not deviate from his signature, directorial tradecraft. A smattering of love between two men. Think Days of Thunder. A female love interest that's usually nothing more than disinformation. Think Top Gun. And the mandatory helicopter whooshing zoom shots. Think Enemy of the State. All three can be seen in all their glory in Spy Game. With Robert Redford signed on to take the lead role of Nathan Muir, Brad Pitt committed to the movie instantly, stating he wanted the part of Tom Bishop because Bob was on board. Have a seat. However, Bob being on board cost Brad Pitt the lead in a little-known franchise known as the Bourne franchise. You may have heard of it. Ouch. Where'd you learn to shoot? Boy Scout, sir. Are you kidding me? With one franchise lost, Pitt made extra sure his role and another one did not flatline. This better be the best damn breakfast I ever had. Oh no, it's delicious. You love it. Spy what Game began doing? shooting in November 2000 and Ocean's Eleven, another little franchise, began shooting in February 2001, giving Pitt, Redford, and Scott just eight weeks to film their shared scenes. You know Langley has seven different birthdays for you? No, they're all wrong. I know. Believe me, it wasn't easy. KGB, Mossad, also wrong. Fortunately, I was well trained. To throw another spanner in the works, a large share of the movie was supposed to be filmed in Israel. Due to the escalation of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict in late September 2000, shooting was moved to Morocco for insurance purposes. Morocco then had to double as not only Beirut, but also Vietnam, with Vietnam flashback scenes being shot in the Moroccan mountains. To enhance the cinematic experience and the flashback sequences, each location and time period has its own color palette. Vietnam is extremely high in contrast, incredibly grainy, slightly overexposed, and heavily saturated. Scenes that take place in West Germany have a blue hue and are desaturated. Hong Kong scenes are also blue, but in comparison are heavily saturated. With a budget of $90 million and a little of that spent on special effects and explosions, you would have thought renting a helicopter for a few days would not have been a problem. However, the studio declined Tony Scott's seemingly basic request. Scott took the matter into his own hands and simply paid for the helicopter rental himself. This is a whole other game. And it's serious and it's dangerous, and it's not one you want to lose. And so, the famous Berlin rooftop scene is born. You go off the reservation, I will not come after you. Fuck your rules, Nathan. Okay. But tonight they saved your life.
Generation, screenwriter David Arada read former Mossad agent Viktor Ostrovsky's book, an expose of the Israeli spy organization. See that apartment building? Yeah. You know anyone who lives there? No. Within five minutes. I want to see you standing in one of those balconies. Muir and Bishop reenact a famous training technique, as highlighted in Ostrovsky's book, used by Mossad spy masters on new recruits. Okay, what did you tell her? One, you're straight, two, you're engaged, three, tomorrow's your girl's birthday, and four, you have no taste in women's fashion. What if she were an asset? You told her four lies that now have to be true. Okay. Whilst Pitt had the charm to talk his way into buildings, the locations themselves were a little less charming. You would be forgiven in thinking that the movie was shot all over the world, although the set designers made an art of the misdirect. The phone call from East Berlin, shot in the Rivoli Ballroom Bar in London. Brad Pitt's Chinese prison scenes, shot in a renovated prison in Oxford, England. U.S. Embassy in Hong Kong is actually the Lloyds Building in London. And yes, you guessed it, most of the CIA scenes were shot in London. Tony Scott dedicated Spy Game to the memory of his mother, Elizabeth Jean Scott, who sadly died in 2001. Ridley Scott, Tony's brother, did the same for his chaotic war thriller Black Hawk Down in the same year. If this movie was released on Netflix today, I have no doubt it would be top of the charts. The fast-paced editing, the gimmicky camera work, and Redford showing the protege how it's done, it's prime Netflix fodder. Do not expect political insight or a lesson on morality. Expect a little cliché. An underachieving upstart whose testosterone led him astray. A veteran CIA spy master one day from retirement being called into action for one last job. Spy Game delivers you two generations of Hollywood's most charming actors, an overwhelming amount of ticking clock tension, and a smart, smug, tight script. Get the popcorn ready. Make sure you're doing it for the right reasons, Tom. Yeah, I'm done with your reasons, Nathan. I'm done with you. I'm not ending up like you. Good luck.